the supporting moment. Well, here's for example, right? Here's an example of why I like organic growth for speed. There's a, a chef that I, to, I follow heavily, and it's just this little woman, this little woman in Mexico, literally an old grandmother type person you would think of. And she cooks homemade on this mall, like an outside grill, wood fire type thing every day. It's incredible. I started trying to copy her recipes. I still do it to this day. She has more subscribers on YouTube than all the paid chefs, like all the big, whatever their names are, the millionaire people. Why? Because people want authentic, genuine, natural content, wholesome stuff. We don't want to just see a big commercial for their thing. So just keep that in mind that you will grow faster just being genuine. going on Facebook? How are we all doing today? Y'all may or may not know me. Um, been around the LCA world a little while. My name is Randy Carroll. I am the strategic sales manager over at Rooster. Uh, before we get started today, I want everyone uh, to put in where they are in the world in the chat, because I guarantee you, uh, I recently moved somewhere way cooler. So uh, we got it. We got it. We got to uh, <laughs> obviously got to compete, but um, the turf battle. <laughs> yeah, I, I live in a, a town of like 10,000 people, but it's by the beach now. So I'm pumped um, today. We've got the one, the only Jason Galaz on um, with us. If you don't already know. Jason has grown an incredibly large Facebook or social media following. I don't know if it's just Facebook. You'll have to tell us more. Um, but ultimately, a huge, huge, huge social media following without having to pour like an unreg a, 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 a ridiculous amount of money into it. I mean, he's a, a, a self-proclaimed guerrilla marketer. So this guy knows what it takes to be scrappy. He actually has a really interesting background. I'll let, you, I'll let him tell you more about that. But ultimately, social media is where we all live. It's not a surprise. Everybody knows it. It's, you know, it's like cliche to say that you hate all the social media platforms that you use, but you use them every day religiously anyways, right? And so um, social media allows you to really, really grow your reach. And then if you play it right, you can monetize it and make a bunch of money um, and sell a lot of homes, right? So ultimately... What we're going to talk about today is how Jason was able to grow his social media um, account to have over 1.4 million followers and, and ultimately um, share some tricks and tips along the way. So that being said, Jason, rather than me giving you a really bad intro, why don't you give us a really good intro to yourself? Well, hello, everyone. Um, Jason Galaz. I'm with EXP Realty. I also founded um, findahome.com and buscatucasa.com, which are uh, basically our home search apps that we partner with Rooster on. And um, I'm actually not a veteran agent. I mean, I've only been an agent about five years. I came into the lab coat group literally learning about real estate. I just wanted to learn how realtors spoke to each other, like what's the jargon. And uh, that was with another broker five years ago. Now, that brokerage was basically big on door knocking. And I'm not big on door knocking. Uh, in fact, like where I grew up from, it's like, you know, how do you get shot? So it's, it's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm just, I'm just not the best person to do it. However, I started thinking about computing my value, time. And my firm belief, belief is that the internet is like door knocking times a million. You know, why would I spend just how I am? I don't want to be hyper focused in one area. Um, I can take the same amount of hours and reach literally tens of thousands of people as opposed to one specific neighborhood. So I dove real deep into that. So just real. And, yeah, yeah, well, look, you know, you've only been uh, in, in real estate for five years. What were you doing before? Just sitting on your couch? <laughs> Um, well, I was deep in the merchandising. Um, so I was deep in merchandising for the last 20 years. And that led me into the music industry 
where I own and still own two music festivals and a record label. One of them is in Tennessee and the other one's in Belgium and Europe. And so I'm pretty much I've always been like think out of the box type of guy, make a dream happen regardless, like at all costs. So that's, and so, well, I mean, let's dive into those. Were you a social media guerrilla marketer back in those industries? Uh, you know, when, when did it start and how did it kind of transition into real estate? So the concept comes from doing the most you can with what you have, right? So I didn't grow up with money. Uh, although I have my own home search app, I don't have Zillow money or ad budgets or anything of the sort. So um, I just knew you just, you just get out in the street and you have to like, think creatively to, to get the message out. And that means networking, partnerships, um, connecting with folks, and then figuring out how to use 10 voices to amplify one, 10 more voices to amplify those 10, make 100, then 1,000 in compound interest of energy and voice. So tell me more about that. Well, so in the music world, if you think about it, like we had like Napster and all those things, basically the music industry like crumbled, right? Where the giants kind of cracked and fell apart and they fell little pieces and all these little bits and pieces started like coming off into their own little companies. And I viewed that as like, it's basically, I was, I was born before the internet. I can't wait to tell my kid that when she gets older. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have that, right? So I don't need to, I don't need to focus, let's just say my music realm. I don't need to focus on local following for a band or a style of music. I have the internet. I could find a few thousand people around the world or around the country or a part of a country that all like the same type of music and that will travel to come see a specific style of event. That's the world we live in now. And I basically take that same concept and put it into real estate. I'm a macro renter. I don't focus on hyper local. I support those that do. I focus on the entire country. And that started with just building a social media following, showing people the beauty of my state, why people move here, the values, the taxes, the Home, home values, everything of the sort. At the same time, you know, it's like kind of like a lot of coincidences, I guess. At the same time that we had that interest rate drop, which increased sales. And so all of these items together kind of put together like a, a perfect storm of a boom of real estate following, mostly on Facebook. So that's probably the first time I've heard that that someone is not focused on hyper-local, but rather focused on the whole country. But then you started to go through some of the content that you're posting, and it seems like it's relatively similar content to what you might post if you're focused hyper-local, like on a specific area. Um, did I misunderstand that? Can you can you kind of clear up some of the differences? Well, we should start, maybe we should start with the concept of what we do. So... I built the Find a Home brand, and we're still building it. You know, we're young, a young brand. And that started with just, or really back just a little bit. One of the things I love about real estate is just finding cool properties. Like, I love architecture. I love older homes. I like mid-century. I love 1800 Victorian. I love it all. <clears throat> so I like to do, I like to just homeschool which in this time, in this day and age, that's something a lot of adults do, just sit on our phone and kind of, scroll looking at Zillow gone by or whatever, you know, whatever we want, whatever interest is. Um and so I would I would just I like to share properties I find. Just like I was a DJ for years. I still play records actually. And one of the coolest things about being like an actual record vinyl DJ is you go out and you find really, really cool records and then you get to play them for people and show them. It's almost like look how much effort I put into finding this cool sound and then just download something because we didn't have download back right then. Um, it's the same concept with homes. So um, that led to me just sharing literally properties on Facebook, which I learned to do. And a lot of people started following that. <laughs> uh, and so what we found is like a lot of people want to see this stuff. 
And so we found a way that you can't do. Um, I built Find a Home in Tennessee is my my largest Facebook group, but there's about 230,000 people in that Facebook group. Wow. Um, and I would and that group has allowed me to build my team, to build my profile, to expand across the whole state. You know, I was with a brokerage where um, if I started getting busy in the other side of the state with referrals, um, I had to go and ask the broker, can you please go join that one so I could then become also a member and do business there. I moved to a different brokerage where uh, I don't have to ask anymore. I could just get licensed and boom, join an MLS anywhere. So that led me to being able to create a, uh, sorry, a statewide IDX feed. So find a home in TN, also find a home in Tennessee.com. They're both different. Like one's a white local site, one's an IDX broker site. The whole point of it is, is they both behave differently and they're like lead gen funnels for us. Mm -hmm. For home shoppers, they're just places to scroll for homes. Um, but it got so popular that other people started taking the name and doing that in their own state, which I'm a little competitive. So I went through and bought every URL I could find that sounded like it across the whole country. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm in California. I awesome. know I'm in CA. I know I'm in Cali. What if I know I'm in Los Angeles? All these different things. There's like 500 of them. Um, but knowing that one day I wanted to have a much larger brand, which is findahome.com. Finally, I was finally able to afford that. You can imagine quite a, quite a large name. Mm -hmm. With the hopes of building a nationwide IDX feed where people would build our own Zillow type thing. Um, so that's basically just like building the car. I still need to build the roads to drive it on. I don't have social media following in New Hampshire or Nevada. So I started partnering with other agents. You know, I, I grew my own Facebook following, not just that group, between other groups and pages. Um, probably about 500,000 between all the different ones. And so meanwhile, to grow these, you were just posting cool stuff you found, you know, cool homes, unique architecture, look at the bedroom in this guy, look at the, you know, et cetera, et cetera, here and there. Yeah, hey, check out this cool property I found. Conversation pieces. And, um, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, if y'all need any inspiration for this, there's actually a Twitter or X formerly known as Twitter account called Zillow Gone Wild. And all they do is post the strangest homes they can find on Zillow. Right. But it has a massive following. Um, it's really interesting. People love looking at homes, like you said. So there's nugget number one from growing your massive Facebook, massive social media following, just post things that you like, homes that you think are cool. Not that you're trying to sell or list or having an open house, but hey, I like this house. Here's why. What do you think? And that was engaging. That's what it sounds like. So one important thing, if you're a licensed realtor and you want to share another realtor property, you should call that realtor and get permission. Make sure you're allowed okay. to share that thing. That's kind of an antiquated rule. I think it came around when people were printing out each other's properties, like in the 80s, and marking as if there's theirs or something. We're not in that day and age. We're in the day and age where we everything's on social media. It's just how we communicate. However, there are rules. And if you're a licensed realtor and you want to share someone's listing, you should get their permission. Sometimes it's the homeowner. Sometimes it's the seller. Sometimes it's the broker. Regardless, you should. Um, what I did was I set up a separate website called sharethislisting.com, and that's sharethislisting.com. Agents across the country could just add their their listing to it, and we'll share it out on our social media. Um, we're in a day and age where we're all kind of being coached, or at least the secret's out on you should build a community group on Facebook, which I believe you should. If you live in Rivergate neighborhood or this west side, Nashville, whatever it is, where there's a community where you live, um, to have some sort of group that doesn't feel too salesy, something that's a value add, whether it's entertainment or places to eat or places people sell stuff, anything of the sort, it's huge on Facebook right now. I'm at a point now, and how we're able to really triple our size of what we manage is agents that have built them and then, and then they've grown too fast. Um, we jump in and, and manage them for them. So we're partnered with agents, and, and what we've done is taken their social media following and created lead gen funnels out of it, 
with our tech stack and with our admins. So unravel that a little bit for us, as, you know, as much as you want. Yeah. Um, so I leave it open, right? Because there's different requirements or personalities or types of social media groups. Like, for example, I have one that's not a legitimate. It's just one that's like I like to do, but it does still get my name out every time. It's I have a, I have a taco, Tennessee taco support group just because Mexican food in Tennessee sucks. Like, it's pretty bad. It's getting much better with our population boom, thank God. But every time we find a great spot or anything with one good plate, we share it in there and try to bring people to it. You know, there's like 5,000 people in there. Every once in a while I'll mention, oh man, I was on my way to a showing, a home showing, and I found this taco stand. It's just little casual, just putting it out there, who I am, what I do. And by the way, I found something we all love, and that's a good taco. So that type of thing. But then also, um, I got a little bit off track with that. No, I mean, <laughs> so, that's a great example. This is another is thing that you love. It's not homes, it's tacos. I mean, everyone loves okay. tacos, right? It could be anything. I've seen them like, um, like moms of Middle Tennessee or something, something football, whatever it is. All it really is is communicating with people, being seen, getting them used to you and familiar with you so that, you know, they comes time to make a decision to buy a home. Hopefully they pick you. So that's, that's the core, right? Um, and, and how are these groups getting found? How are they getting found? Yeah. So like, I like tacos. I want, I might want to join this support group. How, how, how do I come across it? So that, that's an important part of, of social media that people don't realize is you have to understand algorithms, SEO, like behaviors, rules. You have to, you have to, I get so deep into it that I, I can literally feel the algorithm changing like me in the matrix. I can tell when I post something, the way the post is behaving or the stuff that's in my feed, whether or not Facebook's actually showing to people if they're making a change that day or like anything of the sort. So you have to be aware of that stuff. You have to work it. You can't just post in a group. You then, that's just one thing. You have to get to then go promote it. So I'm just always on the internet and I'm always in, I'm in every local group, right? Cause everyone's always like, I need a realtor in Cookville or whatever. I just want to see it. Comment on it, maybe. When I'm in these groups, if I see someone who's like, what's a good margarita? Or like, where, where can I get good Mexican food or anything of the sort? Even though it's not through the real estate, I'll just type real quick. Oh, man, this is a job for the Tennessee Tucker Support Group. And it gets a bunch of laughs and 10 people join. Same thing three days later. And the same thing three days later. With the homes, with the real estate, let's say I post some really cool Victorian Gothic film. I might take that same post and share it into other groups. Victorian home lovers, uh, vintage something, some, whatever. Local Tennessee homes, anything of the sort. Put it out across. The goal is to get other people to share your message for you. To get other eyes that wouldn't have seen it in their feed normally. Because you can have 100,000 followers. doesn't matter if you're not getting you know 200,000 eyeballs on it. Mm-hmm. You have, to, you have to switch it up. No, that makes sense. Um, and a lot of y'all probably notice that you see the same people in your Facebook feed. Like you may be friends with a thousand people, but you see the same 72 people on your feed all the time. Um, that is the algorithm at work, right? Those are the people um, that for whatever reason, the algorithm has shown you're keen on interacting with. So like, what's the secret sauce to breaking out of that? Yeah, when I start, I have more than one Facebook profile because I'm two Jasons, right? I'm Jason, the music promoter who still has a music festival, like all punk rock stuff and things my real estate clients don't want to know about. Then I have real estate Jason. They're the same person, they're genuine. However, if I'm liking like music on one of them all day long and the other one I'm liking homes, they each have different feeds. And you want to break out of that. Just go in every once in a while just unfollow a bunch of people. Yeah. Or if you use certain words all the time, well, that's what you're going to see. It's literally what you put out there. You attract well, Facebook's app. They bank on it and they sell that to people who pay for advertisements. I don't generally pay for advertisements, but I understand how that works. So I just create my own reality. And my reality is people that want to buy and sell homes across the country. 
So real quick, I want to jump into next what I do. So the way we run is we're in support of other agents and teams, right? I, I can't be one team lead. Well, I can be, but I don't want to be a team lead. I'm a team lead for the whole state of Tennessee to get out of the way. That's just like this much of the project. The bigger project is to support other agents and team leads across the country by, by managing and supporting their social media, by generating leads and referring them out to them um, just by being in support. And so it started with me taking other team leads and adding their team to my follow-up boss account as their own things. And when I get leads, let's say I'm building a bunch of Knoxville, but then I drop it to like the Andy Peterson team or the Chris Rains team for here, Darren Miller, whatever it is. That evolved into a separate thing um, where now we're building them their own brands. I'm um, just white labeling my tech stack, which I should note is primarily based around Rooster app, follow up boss, just because I love it and it works well together. And some sprinkling some fellow. Uh, I also have others too. Like I have more than what you are else. I have to go by the over the home box and stuff. But primarily follow up boss and rooster. Um, so I did, I created a separate brand that my that Find the Home Incorporated owns called Welcome Home Listings. It's the same. It works the same as my website, but every time a lead is generated from that one, it follows into a separate pond in my follow-up boss because we're generating a lead within that person's Facebook groups for them. So someone goes to sharethislisting.com, they add their listing that they want promote. a realtor does that. I take that listing and I share it out from findahome.com links into findahome groups. I take the same listing and share it out from welcome home listings into welcome home groups. Then a third one will do it in Spanish to Busca groups, which is our Spanish rooster app that they built for us, um, which is the first Spanish home church app, as you mentioned, uh, to a market that's completely untapped and doesn't even know about it. So now we're taking people's listings and saying, hey, look, promote them for free. Here's everyone that we reach, and we do it in more than one language. Just generate a bunch of leads and send them out. Basically, we're connecting someone who needs something with someone who provides something. And so let's say I'm an agent listening today, and I realize, man, Jason has figured this thing out, and I will not be able to catch up with him. Why don't I just lean into his knowledge? I go into sh I go to sharethislisting.com, and I can plug in um, – my listing and then you're going to get a notification and contact me and then we're going to make it happen or is there something else they need to do first? That's the, I mean, that's the, that's the best way to get your listings out there. That's awesome. That's awesome. And yeah, you know, shameless plug, like I said, I'm Randy Carroll, the strategic sales manager at, at Rooster. Uh, Jason mentioned, has mentioned Visco Tucasa a few times. This is the, country's first ever native Spanish speaking app, right? Where there there is not English in the app. It's it's specifically for Spanish speakers. And it, what makes it so cool is that we use a combination of actual translations from native Spanish speakers and artificial intelligence to provide real-time translations for everything inside the app. So if you are a Spanish speaker, work with a lot of Spanish speakers, or know somebody who um, would benefit from knowing more about Busca to Casa, reach out. You know, down download the app. You can find it in the App Store, Google, or Android. Busca to Casa. Um, it's something that we're really proud of at Rooster. It's a great vision that Jason has had, and so I just wanted to add some clarity on exactly what Busca to Casa is because it's uh, something that's long overdue. There's something like sixty million. Spanish speakers in America, something like that, Jason? Yeah, there's, um, there's 336 million people in the U.S., six, 65 million are Hispanic Americans. There's almost zero tech stack for for that population, which is my, my population. I'm, I'm Irish and Mexican. Um, but so we do help. We do help. Um, we do license that out because the, the goal is to get the message out. But that speaks to also, like, of course, I have a, like, there's a, there's a philosophical reason why we do that is to help people that aren't being, that don't have the same access to the industry as, as everyone else. 
Um, however, it also just speaks to thinking out of the box. The world, there's, there are so many options out to us if we just think it and make it happen because tech is available and the industry is very accessible and you have social media that will turn around and tell everyone about it. And we rely heavily on that because I don't have the massive Zillow, Realtor.com, army of money all these big companies have. What I have is each other and like digging tunnels, popping up and like shooting in the industry and like taking our flag and going to the next <laughs> we're guerrilla, <laughs> we're guerrilla marketing. Yeah, truly. So basically Jason's found things that he likes, things that he cares about, and he has created social media groups surrounding these topics and then just invites and posts about the things that he likes. So that is the one of the takeaways of today is find a social find a topic, create a social media group around it. And then Jason said, be present, throw in comments like on my way to a showing, I found this, right? And people are going to eventually get more and more attracted to you. Um, what What is, to, to, let's talk a bit of, about how you actually um, try like call to actions. Are there call to actions? Um, how are you I getting know, people to raise their hands? The thing is, is like, no one wants to be sold, you know? Um, I think that's why my group grew the fastest and the largest. Like, of course, we're there selling real estate. But it's not like, hey, do you want to buy this house? Hey, do you want to buy this house? Like, somebody makes a comment like, oh, hey, you, like, what I learned was that people just exist in there without se selling to them. I actually don't. I don't. I'll let realtors in. I don't mind realtors. In, in fact, I love realtors being in the group because we're all there together. However, I don't let people sell to people. It's not because I want to sell to them. Because honestly, I don't make the most sales out of that group. I make other people's listings famous and then other agents go and buy and sell them. I just create the community where people can go in there and comfortably check out some cool properties. And there aren't people harassing them for sales all the way down the comments. It makes people like, ah, it makes them back off. Um, just like how they say like money amplifies like who you are. The same goes for social media or reach of anything of the sort. Because... Um, like you go to some groups and it's only that stuff. And you know what it is? It's like a social media great. It's just one person or like a handful of people just posting things for sale all day long. And like, no, no, what's that? They want a community. That's why it's called a community. So be, be visible, be likable, play off the sales thing. But however, be there when it's time and reach out. Mm -hmm. Got it. So be, be ever present. Which, which actually is a great point because you have to be present in order to make this to work, which makes it even more important to make sure you pick something that you like doing, like you like talking about tacos, so it's not that big of a deal for you. But if you were to talk about something that you have absolutely no interest in, it would be really hard to want to remain so present. It kind of becomes more of a chore than something you actually get to enjoy, right? So it's really, really important. Pick something that you like, pick something that you really like, and then just build a community around that particular topic. And so, um, not being salesy, but I know that you are using these communities to, to spread the good word about your Find a Home app, about the Visco to Casa app. How are you going about that? And how has adding your own personalized app had some type of impact on being able to monetize the community? Because at the end of the day, no one gets paid to run a Facebook community. You get paid to buy to help buy and sell homes. Tell me more about the monetization component and, and how that's worked. Well, I, I find it more successful like to be value focused, right? What I do is I help realtors make their listings literally go viral sometimes, like mega viral. One time I had a hundred thousand shares on one property. Wow. I don't charge for that. And I don't really get anything out of it except for like I get SEO and all that stuff. So focus on value, be good at what you do. But then how I specifically do it, how I specifically do it is I do build a big database of people that I don't force registrations on my primary website. It just drives me nuts to have that. Some of my websites do. I get more people that just come to the website, search. If they see something they like, and they reach out, and then that's a higher value lead, right? Because they're like really want information on this one property. We're in a massive database that we can work over time. Um, 
for referrals primarily. Sometimes my team will close them as we start to eat. But um, that's the big thing. Of course, we'll have like partnerships with vendors and anything of the sort. And my app does have a section for vendors. And when we let other agents in different cities license our app to have their own version of it, they can then pick their own trusted lenders that they might work with and share the expenses with. When it comes down to it, we want to help people find a home and we want to help people sell their house. That makes sense. And, and you bring up a point um, that I do want to add, that I want to dig into a little bit more about adding vendors and getting them to pay for it. That's from a high level. That's something that I think has gone on in this industry for a long time, right? Every real estate agent who's ever spoken to a sales guy from a tech company has heard the line, get your lender to pay for it, get your lender to pay for it, right? There are some tech companies that have built almost their entire business off having lenders pay for the product for real estate agents. Rooster is not one of those companies. Um, but what we've done is open up the door to interface with a greater vendor set than you may have ever actually been able to interact with before. These are folks who aren't directly involved in the actual home buying process, right? So um, what has that experience been like bringing in some of your home maintenance style vendors or contractors, your electricians, plumbers, roofers, tilers, um, locksmiths, folks of that nature, uh, when you get to bring them into the fold, you get to lead with even even more value because you get to go to your consumer and say, hey, here's a laundry list of vendors that I know, like, and trust to do a good job for you. And you don't have to invite strangers over to, to um, help you out when you get locked out of your house, right? So the question really is, what has it been like working with other vendors, getting them to, uh, involved and does that help having those other 10 voices get involved with social media and ultimately into your app? So I'll actually we'll bring it back to the Facebook groups as well because this is something we're just now coming to where since we have such a massive reach now with all our Facebook partner group owners is for them to jump in and work with us. And I only want to do that with someone I trust who's going to do a good job honest and present and available so to take a trusted vendor or two or three vendors for like nashville los angeles or whatever and have them in there communicating the social media is more hands on deck it's more lead gen because some people want to speak to a lender first and some want to speak to a realtor first and most don't want you to talk to them at all um, however if you do even like um my neighbor's a really great paint painter and I trust them enough to vouch for them and put them in my app as a, or someone could select the, here's someone who's a, who does a good job. But maybe they're a social person as well. And that's just one extra voice building the community online of trust that people can reach out to. So don't be afraid to team up. You don't have to do this alone. See, that, that's the direction I wanted to go. You don't have to do this alone, right? This is social media. It's meant to be social reach out to these other vendors, invite them to participate in the Facebook group, invite them to participate in being present in your mobile app. And like you said, you think logarithmically. So you go from 10 to 100 to 1,000 rather than from one to two to three to four. Um, that, that's, that's been a great, that's a, I think that's been a great strategy. So um, let's see, I think this is booked for about 40 minutes. I wanted to save a little bit of time. I wasn't sure if there are any questions coming from Zoom or on social media, trying to review that here without listening to myself. Um, any questions from the chat or are there any other pieces you feel like that are really vital that we've left out? No, just that mine is Facebook groups, but you can, you can use other TikToks, a great one, Instagram, anything, anywhere, where people are communicating. Or um, do, I'm probably one of like six millennials who doesn't have an Instagram account. What is the, what is the uh, secret to that to that community? You know, I I do have find, uh, a find a home Instagram, but it's really just me being a realtor on there. I don't do heavily into it uh, because my format is Facebook driven, and that's where most 
on purchasing aged adults are? <laughs> uh, what is yeah. the question? Right How long did it take? Great question. So, I'm a little bit of conspiracy theory on this, but <laughs> um, a lot of it happened over COVID. And that's to me because a lot of algorithms were opened up and I was there home present and a lot more people were on their phone searching. And so a lot of momentum built up to where we went from one to 200,000, like a year and a half total in that one fight at home in Tennessee group. Um, and the more momentum you get with social media, they start opening it more for you. They literally start opening up the windows and wherever you can see what you're doing. And they start offering you the beta version, of all these different programs or, uh, so that was that point. I would say it's kind of like when people say you make your first million is the hardest part. Well, for me, the first few hundred thousand people were the easiest part. And then after, I mean, were the hardest part. And then after that, actually, it's just like, boom, boom. Now, like I said, other people with other groups that have built their groups, we now manage theirs for them. So, M momentum begins sure. momentum. Yeah, that's right. So now it's like it was 1.4 million when we made the graphic. Now it's 1.5 million. And we'll probably be a few million within a few months so we could just keep pushing and. When it comes down to it, realtors want to be realtors, and we just help them do the social media for them if they need it. Not like fake posting stuff, just group management, lead generation. And the best way to start that is to go to sharethislisting.com. Um, yeah. Okay, just want to make sure I understood that. And then Manny's Find next question was, sorry? Findahome.com, my primary brand. Findahome.com, rooster.com. Um, and Manny's next question was, what advice do you have for starting a group? Definitely be genuine. Be genuine and don't do what everyone else is doing. Or it'll be like the gold rush of realtors running to Facebook to go do that right now. Yeah, no, I, th I think this circles back to really uh, what we talked about before, where you got to pick something that you like and then just stay present posting in it, right? Uh, Manny, the content that... Um, Jason started off with was just posting really interesting houses, things he thought were cool. Nothing, not, not necessarily trying to sell that particular house, um, but just thought it was cool. You know, the next thing he did was tacos. Tennessee has, ta Easy. Tennessee has a, a an improving taco scene, and Jason wanted to make sure everyone knew about the new and improved tacos. This um, is just supporting moments. Well, here's for example, right? Here's an example of why I like organic growth versus paid growth. There's a, a chef that I, used to, I follow heavily, and it's just this little woman, this little woman in Mexico, literally an old grandmother type person you would think of. And she cooks homemade on this mall, like an outside grill, wood fire type thing every day. It's incredible. I started trying to copy her recipes. I still do it to this day. She has more subscribers on YouTube than all the paid chefs, like all the big, whatever their names are, all the millionaire people. Why? Because people want authentic, genuine, natural content, wholesome stuff. They don't want to just see a big commercial for their thing. So just keep that in mind that you will grow faster just being genuine. Yeah, just whatever, whatever you enjoy, you know, take look at your calendar for the last 30 days and look at the stuff that you did and you enjoyed doing. Take that and then run with it. Um, awesome, Manny. Thanks for the kind words. We appreciate that. Um, we've got a few more minutes left. If there's any final questions or Jason, we can skip straight to your, your, your parting thoughts. Um, okay. We've got something in here. All right. All right. Uh, as you said, I'm licensed in Tennessee and South Carolina. It'd be better to start two different groups, different topics versus trying to incorporate the two tourist areas that I mainly have transact. Uh, Let's, I'll let Jason answer that, but I definitely have an opinion. Jason, what do you what think? Two, two, two different Facebook groups for two different areas or one Facebook group and incorporate them both? Well, you have to think of it from a marketing standpoint or just a number standpoint too. Like how many of this type of person are there? That's going to naturally determine how big your pool is, right? So for me, it was people moving to Tennessee not to Nashville or Knoxville or not cabin homes or whatever. I do have a little side vet brands like that, like 10 millions. It's all like million dollar homes in Tennessee. That's a different one I have. 
it's only 30,000 versus 230,000 in Tennessee. So whatever the bigger pool is or whatever you think is gonna be, give you more opportunity. I would ask how how similar are those tourist areas as well, right? Like would somebody who's looking in one really consider the other? Uh, it could be a good opportunity for them to get cross exposure to areas they weren't necessarily thinking of as well. Uh, next question was about what kind of what, what areas do you really cover? Looks like the whole country, right? Yeah, like I I will personally sell real estate in Tennessee, although I'm licensed in other states. Um, but our our findahome.com app is live in 13 states, but I fully plan on being in all 50 states as many as I can. However, that's a lot of MLSs. So one at a time. <laughs> California. I chose um the high volume ones. California, Florida, Texas, like Chicago, Illinois, New York. Those ones, and then we'll, and then we'll move to the rest of it. Sorry if I called you the rest if you're in another state. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of y'all, the flyover states. No, no offense, no offense. It's a beautiful flight. Uh, Lindsay says Myrtle Beach and Pigeon Ford. Those are the two touristy areas she serves. To me, that screams mountain and beach, right? Like, that could be a beautiful group full of people posting photos of the mountain and of the beach. That could be, are your buyers people who invest in, in vacation homes in different areas? So maybe it's vacation homes group. Or you have people that oh, these people want cabins, and these people want beach. You could go either way. You could do two groups, you could do one. I'm going to do one down the road for um, homes, vacation homes in Mexico, because a lot of realtors I know are buying property in Mexico right now. And so I just have the opportunity to promote that. East or West, Mexico is not going to matter because our buyers would be one or the other. They're the same. However, a beach and a cabin buyer might be more than likely different. So, Lindsay, it's, it feels like you probably know your clients a little bit better than we would, obviously, do some introspection and see what are they, is someone who buys in Myrtle Beach someone who's likely to buy in Vision Ford as well? I don't know. Maybe. Um, and then there was another question about, do you do paid ads or is it all organic? I think he's all answered organic. that. Yeah. I only, I've only done paid ads to other realtors when I'm at a conference just so that they're hearing me on stage, but then they're also, I'm also popping up on their phone. So I like to get all, you know, 1984 on them. <laughs> it's a big brother on there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Big brother is always watching. When it comes That's down awesome. to it, I just don't have that kind of budget. I, got, I'm, I have to be clever. Hey, I think a lot of people resonate with that. Um, well, Jason, that was awesome. Super helpful. There are very clear action items today. I don't, you know, I don't want to insult anybody by spelling them out again, but it's as clear as find your hobby, create your Facebook group, post constantly, bring value. Capture leads with your own personalized rooster app. There's the bonus content. <laughs> um, it helps. It absolutely does. Uh, Jason still holds the record for most downloads in the first weekend live. So. Uh, I don't think that's a record that's going to get broken anytime soon. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time this afternoon. Really, really appreciate it. Um, people can find you at findahome.com. Is that right? Yeah, findahome.com, Jason Galaz, G-A-L-A-Z. Awesome. Findahome.com, Jason Galaz. You can find me. I'm on the Facebooks, uh, Randy Carroll. I am, uh, you can find it, uh, find me more at rooster.com, R-U-U-S-T-E-R. -E that's two U's, not two O's rooster.com. And uh, I look forward to uh, the next time we chat, Jason. Thanks so much.